Hi everyone. Uh, I'm Heine from Erdster and welcome to our community, January community session. I had just a moment for a technical issue the streaming didn't want to start, but now we are live. As a reminder, I want you to know that anytime you're experiencing issues with the video, just reload your website, reload your LinkedIn page and click the play button. It's important that you click the play button because often it doesn't start on its own. And there is a bit of delay in the video and the actual um, streaming that I'm doing myself. And I'm happy to see many of you here live today. I have been checking some of you are already an Earthster user and some of you are not. So for those of you who don't know what is Earthster, Earthster is an LCA tool that's designed for your whole team to be able to get the most out of your LCAs. So if, for example, you're the LCA expert, you create the LCAs and you share with your team, with your management, for them to be able to do more sustainable and greener decisions within the company. And what's even best is that you can use Earthster even to communicate with various types of stakeholders, for example, your customers, your suppliers, you're able to share with them the, your LCA results in a visual way that even those who don't have any LCA expertise can understand what they're seeing. And in a moment, I'll demo you how it looks. Let me start sharing my screen. And one thing I would like you to do, please ask questions in the chat. I might be a bit too fast when it comes to talking because I don't have visual feedback. So sorry about that. If you notice that I'm talking too fast, just write it in the chat and we can go through the same section again. The goal is for you to understand how to use Earthster. Today we will also go through the latest feature updates, what has changed and how is that affect you. And of course, I would like you to communicate like engage with the community members that's what we want to do we want a lively community that help each other create better lcas and make the world greener through that interaction and let me share my screen this my own camera is in my way of sharing now you are Seeing at the moment, Earthster, let me go to this view. Today, I want to show you an, a sort of LCA of ourselves as a company. Earthster is designed for product LCAs. It's much better for that. But you're able to use Earthster for a project, for an organizational LCA, even a vacation trip if you find that information useful for yourself. And the first thing we are going to do today is I have here already an existing cycle. This is a, a mock-up how our LCA could look in last year. And actually, the numbers are not correct. But what I'm going to do is create a duplicate. So when I'm inside the workspace, you see all your cycles if you have already several. You click on hover over the cycle itself and click duplicate. That way, what you do is you get a copy of that cycle and it will not, you will not destroy it, especially in this case that I want to demo to you. I want to be able to, to do changes without doing any harm to the original file. And this is also the extremely good way of doing what if scenarios and testing out and seeing how things changes when you change any of your values in your LCA. And as you can see, this is a copy. Now, what you see is the basic stages of a cycle. In Earthstar, LCA models, we call them cycles. And this is one of the cycles. You see the, the impact circles, what you see, these are the impacts related to each other. And currently you're saying climate change, from the impact category perspective. And if you click here, you get to see several many different versions. For example, damage to human health. Let me open one of these so you see actually some changes. This is how the impacts looks when it comes to damage to human health, damage to ecosystem, 
it changes it a bit, reorders based on the biggest impact. Then damage to resource availability. We have climate change that I started with. And this is something uh, you'll notice in a moment. Last one, the fifth one is water use. And uh, so you're able to, when you're building your model, just by one model, you get all these five impact categories. If you want to have more impact categories, with a full equipment license, you're able to download the PEF impact categories. So you get many more, but you need a full equipment license for it. But during the demo, now I'm going to focus on the climate change impacts. And as you can see, as an organizational LCA, from the diagram itself, you already see that our biggest impact is coming from sales and marketing. And this is a shock for many, many people who have seen this LCA. It's not business travel. It's not all the flying back and forth between Europe and Finland. And actually, if we go into business travel, here you even see, let me open the drawer itself. You see what kind of inputs there are in this cycle. We had a company meeting and I added several air travels, hotels, restaurants, car travels, and inside air travels. This is a bundle where I added many flights. And as you can see that there is even a flight between New York and Helsinki, several Valencia, so many, many places. And still, if you go back here, the biggest environmental impact is coming from our sales and marketing budget. I'm, I'm not sure for how many this is a surprising factor, or is it something that you thought that, oh, of course. Let me show you where the impact is coming from. When you open the drawer, you see it in a numerical value. And here you can see that I have two different uh, inputs. One is digital marketing, money put on Google Ads, and the other one is online events, for example, this one. and those two activities, even though we think that online things don't create environmental impact, they do create a huge impact because now when you're watching this, you're watching this event, there are many servers talking to each other, a lot of electricity is consumed, the data is sent back and forth all over the world, depending where you are, and that creates a lot of environmental impact. So this is something good to remember that when you are thinking of how you can improve your business, it's worth looking into the tools that you're using and not just whether your employees are having uh, work trips or not. But since this is a copy, I'm going to go ahead and change some of the numbers because I would like to show you that whenever you do a change in the values, the, the impact itself gets recalculated in, in an instant matter. Let me show you. So, for example, if we change our digital marketing ad to uh, budget to only 5,000 euros, $5,000, uh, it auto calculated. And now, what I can do is um, add here, for example, now let's imagine, because once you have an LCA, what you can do is do comparisons. See, like, Kind of like we call them also what if scenarios that this is one of those that I have the original cycle. This is a duplicate. I changed here something and I want to see that what happens if our budget is lower or what happens is that I lower the budget and let's decide to do physical printed papers to send it out to people. And let me show you again. I might be going a bit fast. So if I go back to sales and marketing, in there, I want to add a new process. I click Add New. It opens the search, searching for new, adding new processes is the search bar. And here I'm going to start writing printed paper. Printed paper. And it starts already look for anything all the keywords that i'm using so i'm utilizing here two keywords and it looks for the words inside the title and what's inside this description of each process and when 
for example, now I have gotten 105 results and I need to know that, okay, which one do I choose from these? The first thing to do is click on the info button. You click here, you see what data is available of that data set. And this is an echo inland process. And this is what they have given us. There's not much data, not much description. It just says that it's a printed paper. Here I can see the top processes that where is the biggest impact coming from. But the best thing now what you can do is click the button you as a cycle. It opens a new tab. I'm going to share that in a moment. Exactly. Now what you're seeing in front of you is the echo invent process called market for printed paper. What I can do is dive deeper into it. Where is the, all that impact coming from? And is that process a good one for my purposes? And look, this is how it looks. There is uh, obviously they're using a laser color printer jet. There's many. Oh, and this is something that's interesting. Look, there's many times operation printer laser, operation printer laser. This is because it takes a market for printed paper. Equipment uses the words market for, for situations that there's might be, in this case, there's at least four different type of printing um, processes. It bundles them all together. So for example, inkjet, I, I don't have another type of printing and all and puts them all together averaging into something so this is perfect when you don't know what what process has been used to print your papers and what you can do is explore the data even further so if you're really really curious when you're hovering over on the impact circles you see the button explore this fetches even more data and you can dive deeper and deeper that where is the impact coming from? For example, this is market for paper. So here you can see that from the paper itself comes a big portion of the environmental impact and you can go through, through, dive deeper into where is the data coming from? Really useful for helping you decide which process is better in your case. But let's go back to the original cycle here. I'm going to close this. And because I have decided that this is a great one for us, it's a global um, average. I'm fine with that. I'm going to add the process. And now it assumes that if you don't put any value, it puts it as one kilo. And um, for make it too simple, I'm going to say that we are going to print 10 kilo of paper. That's a lot of, lot of leaflets. It's automatically calculated. I can keep here uh, like a description of what is it? 10 kilo of leaflets. Leaflets like this. And everything is opposite. You don't need to worry about ever losing data except if you just at that moment when you're writing, you lose, or lose your internet connection, then after when you get back to your connection, it's better to check it if it's actually done it, but otherwise it auto saves everything. You click done anything and there it is. And now I have 10 kilo of paper inside my cycle. And um, now what next? So I have made changes. The next thing I want to do is compare. How is this cycle different to the one that already exists? And uh, for me to be able to do that, there is a simple button here, compare. But before I click the button, you need to remember that any time to be able to compare, or for example, if I would, be, would already want to share this information with a customer, if I click here in sharing, as you can see, it does not let me share the cycle until I save a release. This is one of the feature updates that we have recently done that exactly it blurs out. You're not able to do it. So it's a really good reminder for you that, oh, yes, release first. I click save release. Um, I add the notes, what I have done, added paper issue a release and this is 
the release, what, what it does is a snapshot of your um, cycle. And another feature update that we recently done is that you're able to view these releases in a visual way. So next to the name, there's always the mini menu where you na navigate through different settings. Almost the last one, so the one before the last, called releases. You click there. And here, now you can see already that I have done one release. And this is visually not so great. But now if I do some other changes, for example, let me go back into sales and marketing. We add a hmm, fabric because we are going to print a flag, let's say. Let me see what we find. This is a really powerful way of searching for processes compared to many other tools out there. Because what you can do is use multiple keywords, but you should use always the tags also to help you find the, the process itself much faster. And for example, because I want to look up fabrics, which is a good synonym also for textile, but this one is saying that this is a processing process. And I'm like, no, I want the material product. Now I have two options. I can either mark it that exclude processing from my search results or show only material products in my search results. And I'm gonna do this. It's gonna filter out. Now I have only 3000 processes that it shows up. And um, let's say we are gonna go fancy. We are gonna print a silk with our Erster banner and I'm gonna take market for textile silk again. If I want, I can read the description itself, dive deeper, but I know that this one is a great, great one, great process. I add it in here and uh, I don't know, I'm going to leave it as one kilo because I don't know how heavy is a flag. So just for the example, it's going to be one kilo. And let's print a flag. Done editing. And now I have done again changes. So now what happened is that I have an existing release, but I have done changes in between. And now these changes that I've done is not taken in count in um, if this cycle would be used by someone else. For example, you've been utilizing this cycle in your own cycles, or it will not be notified with, for example, suppliers. But what I will do now is I issue a new release. And I just say add a fabric. My keyboard likes writing too many efforts. I click issue a release. And now you see a progress. The progress bar happens to be, the visuals itself happens to be a bit boring because the impact difference was so small that you don't see. But depending how many changes you do when you're taking out processes, lowering, you'll get a really visual graph. And here you can see the different releases. If there's any point I need to delete one, I just say that, okay, delete this one. Or I can edit the text, what I have done related to it. So these are releases. And now that we have a release, what I'm able to do is compare this cycle with the original uh, cycle itself. I clicked the button saying compare. It automatically takes that cycle where I'm in, and this is what you're seeing. So it's not comparing this to anything at the moment. You click on the mini menu, click on the settings, Click on the one called Add New Reference. It opens this, the Compare search bar. And here is, is the same search as processes. So you're able to compare your cycle to any other cycles, any other processes. And that's why it's super important that you have a release of the cycle that you want to compare to. And I know that from the other one I have already. So for example, I start writing LCA of and here you can see drafts 
and I want to find my version. Exactly. This is the one that I used. This is one way of uh, finding your own cycle. Either you have to remember exactly what you have written, what is the title of the cycle, or another trick, instead of using the name of the cycle, you can utilize your own organization's name. Ours is called Erster, but yours is called something else. So you write that, and then it shows up all the cycles that have a release. But this one, I click Add Cycle. I can add multiple if I would want to, but this time I'm not going to add several. Or actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add Christina's version. Scroll up. Click the button Compare. And uh, <laughs> something weird happened. It didn't want to do it. Let me see what's going on here. Exactly. When you encounter that the compare button doesn't work, sometimes that happens in uh, situations I think it doesn't like that I'm streaming. It interferes with the JavaScript. Just reload the page and it fetches it again. As you can see here, now they even added twice because I clicked the button twice. So how to solve that? You go back to settings. You delete the ones that you added by accident. You hover over the one, click remove, and then you again click remove. Doesn't want to reload automatically. Normally it should. And now you have the comparisons. So the first one is my copy version that I didn't name it smartly. It's just called copy. And as you can see, it has a much lower impact than the other versions. And uh, this is a really great way to do what if scenarios and comparisons. And what you, if you have a great comparison, you can even share this public. So what I can do now is go back to the settings and I can say fully public, take the link from the browser itself. Just make sure you don't take the edit. This and share it with whoever should be able to see it. That's a good way of also stakeholder management. And also another way of doing it, you can take screen prints and add it to your PowerPoints and presentations, whichever reporting things you're using. So now the comparisons you get access to once you have the releases, you have now a visual way checking what has changed in your cycles. But there's a really cool other feature update that I, we have recently done. And that is something that many of you have been waiting for. And it's the ability to see when a cycle has been updated. So in your data sources, or exactly if there's any changes. Now, let me go here, this again into the copy one. The last settings button here is called data sources. From here, you see where is all your data coming from. In this particular cycle, I have three different sources. I have equipment processes, right? I'm able to expand and see what data sets are up to date or if there's anything up, like new updates available. Then I'm using 12 processes from USCIO. That's the input the output database that we have. And I'm having, I'm using my own cycle in here. It's called remote worker in Europe. And according to this, there is, there has been made some changes, a release. And because of that release, it has, shows me here that there is new versions available. What you do is just click update, it fetches the data, and it updates your cycle at that moment. Now, I know that in the broadcasting is a bit of um, delay, but I would like to hear some of your questions, thoughts. What is there anything specific that you would like me to show you at the moment? And let me see. Oh, yes. One of the questions that is this LCA open slash public? Not yet. It's, uh, I will 
either publish this one or I will make a version that is uh, good for publishing because the numbers here are not correct and uh, it's more for exercise purposes the numbers and that's why I would like to make first a version and then I will make one of these public so that you can use it also as a example for yourself or as a starting point for your own LCA. Okay, let me see. Any other questions? And while I'm waiting for the delay, I would like to remind you that if you ever encounter any issues in Urchster and you need help, send a message to support at urchster.org or straight away to me, heine at urchster.org. That way we can see that if there's something like, so I'm happy to help and that's one of my roles. So inside Urchster, I'm doing trainings, I'm product expert, I know the app inside out. So if you have te technical issues or you need a consultant, come to me and I'll let you know. Uh, I'll guide you further. And also if you're interested in getting the business license from, from us, then we have our sales team or you can come to me and I'll guide you to our sales team to talk to. So looks like that there is no questions whatsoever. So let me check my cheat sheet if I have showed you everything that I was planning on. I was planning on showing you the track your releases impacts progress in a visual way that you have seen. Sharing a cycle is only possible when you have a release. You've seen that it's blurred out. And the latest one, update the data of your data sources. That includes your own cycles, your suppliers and databases as you could as you saw a moment ago and let me see still yes i have some new comments i need to utilize several <laughs> screens at the moment is there any training support to learn what kind of training support so for example when you get a business license, you'll get two hours of training, like personalized training to, to you and your team's need, depending on how much LCA you know. We started also offering uh, training on demand. So if you need some specific training, we can give you an offer. And uh, another really good resource to learn to use Urchster is using our brand new help section. In the last session, I showed it. So when you're logged inside Urchster, you go and click the button, the information or the question mark, you click there. You have two options here, take the tour or the documentation. Taking the tour will take you through the first tour, how to create a cycle that explains everything related to how to set up a cycle. But the documentation, when you click that one, it takes you to a new tab, opens, uh, our knowledge base and my internet is slow exactly now you can see here the knowledge base there are collections for example i highly recommend you start with the getting started there's many articles you start from the beginning read through and there is even a button to go to the next one this is one way of using the knowledge base Another way of doing this, instead of browsing, you can just search for what's in your mind. For example, if I look for EcoInvent, let's see what it says. The search results for EcoInvent shows me two different, no, several, even more articles. Benefits of having a full EcoInvent license, export your cycles with EF compliant data sets, and this is one of those things that you click on it, read it, and then if you still haven't gotten an answer to your question, you are able to give feedback on the actual article itself and contact us. So let me give you again the email here, this one. 
did I answer the question of is there any training support support to learn? Is this some did, like did you get the right answer what you were looking for? And um, while I wait for the answer, I can also show you another really good resource what you can utilize. Being part of the Herbster community, what I would like you to do is engage with others in our forum. The forum address is uh, this one, herbster.org slash forum. And this is how it looks. It's a simple forum where when you want to comment or create your own topic, you'll have to create your user. This is a Wix based uh, forum, so it's it's not coupled with your Urster registration. This you can use, for example, Google to sign up. That's what I did. And there's five different topics where you can have conversations for. For example, here we have two posts in fe feature wishes. And there is the welcome one. And there is another one saying that they would like to do this and that. And as a user, you can, for example, comment on it that, wow, this would be so awesome. I would like this also. Or there's many ways of interacting with the community, especially I recommend you use, for example, questions about LCA, that when you're building your LCA and you're unsure how to do it, or you have this pickle of, should I use this process or this one instead, feel free to put it out here. We are continuously monitoring and trying to answer it ourselves. And also, I, re I would like the community to answer your question, because inside our community, we have LCA professors, LCA experts, consultants, and there are many of them who knows that, who can recommend you what to do and how to do. But yeah, this is the forum. Please use it, engage with others, network, grow your network and that way we can have an awesome community then another question do you have a demo version for students or something interesting a demo version hmm in a way yes a demo version from our perspective is financial you create you can create straight away an account that's called community. That's for free. Anyone can sign up. You can invite even your own own team or like uh, classmates into the same organizations. I can show you that I, for example, have many, many organizations, so-called accounts. And as you can see, some of them are business accounts, some of them are community accounts. And I'll show you the test organization. So everything in there, when I click here, I switch between the organizations. And here you can see some examples that we've been doing, testing ourselves. There is a main workspace. So visually, it looks the same as the business one. The functionality is the same as in the business one. So with a community account, you are able to try it out fully. What is it to use Urster? The main difference is are the data and let me show you here if we go back here so here you can see that a business account can use 200 echo event processes and the community one is able to use only 20. so what does this mean let me show you so if i go back here open any of the cycles for example this one, the way we count the equipment processes is uh, like one of these. This one, for example, market for group electricity, medium voltage. It's an equipment process. And this counts now as a one. I can use this in 100 other cycles. It doesn't matter. It's unlimited. It still counts as one. But now if I go back here and see my list, I have one, two, three, four, five different, six, seven, even more. So about, about 20 different processes. And if they are equipment processes, they would count as all of them as 
one process, but the same ones I can utilize in others. And when it comes to the community account, anytime you have an account, uh, a cycle that you have created a release, that means that that cycle is publicly available inside Earthstone. So, for example, when I was searching up in Earthsurf for processes, if you now search for this, the piece that you asked for, you will find that in Earthstar. Because this has a draft, or this has a release. It doesn't show up as draft. But for example, this one doesn't. Because that's still in construction. And as you can see, it doesn't even have data. And that will not show up. And that's in community. And in business, the business account user is fully in control whether they want the cycle to be public or not, or partially public. I can even show you that. I go back to the Earthsters organization here, go to the cycle I created a moment ago, the copy one. And if I go to the sharing settings, here you can see that this particular cycle is not shared with the public, not shared with the customers, and I have not given any special access to anyone. Now what I can do is share with all my customers. For example, I think you don't see the drop-down menu. So if I click on the sharing with customers on the drop-down, I can share total impacts, which means that they can utilize my cycle in their own cycles in their LCA and see the total impact per each impact category, but not see the stages, for example. Next level is level one called stages. So if I share with that um, settings, they are able to see production, distribution, and use and see the values in there, the total values. Level two means this up to here. So they can see anything that I have put, for example, into descriptions in the cycles or the processes itself, and all that data is in there, and they are able to view it. And the last one is all levels. This means that everything I have done here, they have view rights, they're able to see it. But for example, as a business user, what you can also do is say that, okay, all my clients or my customers can see the total impact. I don't mind them to see it, but I have my special customers who I want to share more. And this is how you do it. If they are already, like, like they show, they are already your customer inside or I'll show you in a moment how to do it. And they show up here, you click add, it's added with the same settings as how it was shared before. So from here, I choose all levels. And now what happens is that the test organization has access to this cycle. And let me show you how it looks from their perspective. So this is the copy. I need to remember the name of it, or maybe i be smarter and rename it. And I'll say of Ernster. Mine is latest version. That's how I'm going to call it now. And it's saved it now with this name. And what I do now is, so if I go back to the sharing settings, it's still shared. It should have a latest release just in case I'm going to create a release. Just in case I made some changes. Whoops issue a release, and I'm sure that with this release, they are able to see that cycle. Now, let me log into that organization. I click here, test organization, and this time, here you can see that we've been testing customer request, but that's a different thing. The way to check these kind of uh, shared with all my customer cycles, or if you're a customer and it's shared with you, you go to the section called suppliers and customers, you go in here and see what is shared with you. 
So from here, you can see that the test organization has suppliers. Suppliers are the ones who share data with you, as Erster, Heine, and Impulse International. And as customers, means test organization sharing data with them, they have Erster. So Erster is on both sides. And this is, this is needed when you want data to flow to both directions. But here it is as a supplier. So because this time Erster was a supplier, I click there. Let me see. Here is the whole list, everything that Erster is sharing with test organization. And any of those I can check out. And here's a huge list because we like sharing our data. And you can go into them. And now I'm even having difficulties to find the one that I created. Let me see. Here, here it is. I see LCA Virgster. When you click on a cycle first, it will tell you where is it utilized. And in this case, you can see that it's not used anywhere. You click on it. And this is how it looks from the customer's perspective. So it's in view mode. It shows all the different functional units and production units that cycle has had. Then when you click into the drawer itself, you see the values, but I'm not able to edit them. For example, sales and marketing, I can go in there, see all these things. If there's any descriptions or something, I'm able to see them. And this is a really awesome communication to con way of communi communicating your environmental impact with your customers and a really powerful one. Because of course, now what they do is they can either just check it out what we are doing now, or they can put this cycle into one of their own. So for example, let's imagine now test organization would be doing uh, LCA of their own like organizational LCA. They could take this cycle, put, put in there that mm, they use it, let's say five hours a week and put it based on that because I have added several different functional units into that cycle. So for them, it doesn't even need to say that, okay, one year of usage, no, they can even go to our level and use that inside a cycle, which means it gets taken into account. And this is what we, it's different to many other LCA tools. This is how you handle also supplier data, for example, if you are manufacturing a product and you want your supplier to offer you data, this is how it looked like. Let me go again back to Erdster. So you do the same thing. And as a supplier, do I have any cycles that I have suppliers in there? I might have, I don't remember, but I'll just open the same one. No. I'll open the same one we were playing with a moment ago. So this is my latest version. And uh, let's imagine now, because I've been using in this cycle average data, and I would like to know the real environmental impact of Google Ads. What I can do is request an LCA from them. When you open the process itself, what you want to ask from the supplier, you click here, request LCA from supplier, you fill out their name. So if they're already your supplier, you stand there. Otherwise, you need to add the email. And you put here a message that, oh, I need the LCA for your Google Ads. That's what I would put. And I click Send Request. What the supplier gets is this cycle that I'm using in my LCA as a template. Let me show you how it would look. So I click you as a cycle. And this is what they get as a starting point. If they have already another one, they can say that, no, use this one, please. But otherwise, if they don't, what they do is uh, they will start filling out the information of this. So they get this in edit mode and they can say that, okay, services, we don't use books, newspapers, we don't have any. They can just delete that process. Other real estate, we have much more. They modify the number, 
create a release, and that's connected with my LCA. That's what we call connected LCA. And any time they do changes to the cycle, when they do a release, I get notified. And that notification is here where I showed you before. So at the moment, here's where you find it, data sources. And this, this would here would say Google, and it would say that one update is available, and then I'm able to update my cycle, and that way it keeps always up to date. And um, yeah, it's an awesome way of getting data from your whole supply chain, because what you're doing is you get real LCA data, and at the same time, they get an LCA, a super simple paint by number style LCA. So it's much better than any, any of these spreadsheet styles or, oh, please give us only how much electricity you use because they might have different environmental impacts that you didn't think of when you asked your questionnaire. This one utilizes straight away an echo inventory process. And if you chose a good one, their life is so much easier and yours will be also because you get your data much, much faster. But let me see, is there any other questions? If I share details, especially with a customer, can they then share this with their customer? Good question. Hmm. So you mean that when you have shared the data with all your customers? I don't know. I haven't thought of this one. I need to ask our team and I'll get back to you and let you know. I think they are not able to do that. They shouldn't be able to do that. But I'm not 100% sure. That's a great question. And I need to figure out. Any other questions? It's a funny, funny situation with waiting for the questions because, of course, when you by the time you're watching this, you're going to be a pause for you, <laughs> and I need to have the pause. But if there's no questions, this is all what I wanted to share with you today. Our community sessions are a monthly thing, so about in a month we'll be having the next one. It's they're always really similar a short demo, and then we focus on the latest feature updates and the questions that you have. And that way you get to learn to use Urgster, get to network, and um, get the most out of using Urgster. That's, that's the main point. And what I would like to do with this community is eventually do real collaborative LCAs. For example, one challenge that I encounter often, as you could already see it from our own LCA, is that many are asking for data related to online events. And there is really little existing. Not yet. There is some. And what would be cool is to do a joint, like kind of like an open project that we contribute to each other, create a template, and build on top of each other in a way to see that, oh, this is now the nicest uh, model how a one-hour online meeting session could look like. And that is a community effort, at least at this point, until uh, Echoinman decides to make a proper LCA research and publish one in their new data sets. Or even they could utilize our, our data set, what we can create together. And there's many opportunities like this to help, like, to grow the LCA know-how in the world. That's what we want to achieve. And that's all visualness comes from there, that the goal is that it's not only the LCA expert who does the LCA and that's it, has created the report and then it stays there forever, but it's the 
product development team, the management team, even the marketing team is able to see the results, do better decisions, share it with stakeholders who, who needs to have access to the data and that way make the make your business so more sustainable little by little because you can engage all all your company much better if they they have seen that ah so using printing one paper has an impact on the overall impact of the product or the company and such things or the opposite that printing one paper doesn't have any effect you might encounter such situations also but i can see that there's no questions at the moment so i would say that's it for today's session thank you all for joining it was really nice to have you and thanks for the great questions you will be able to see the recording inside earth oh sorry not inside earth Star. i'm getting tired uh so when you come back to this event you're always able to check it out you you can watch it anytime it will end up also on our website and even on our youtube channel in our youtube channel there's many great videos how to do videos and demos and that's you can also utilize it for learning more how to use urgster and um yeah that's it enjoy using urgster and if you have any questions how to use urgster you get stuck with something send a message to support at urgster.org or just go and sign up to Urgster and try it out yourself and see how it is. And especially if you don't get for any reason any emails from when you sign up, you get the emails from info And if you don't get them, send a message straight away so that you don't get so so that you can actually get to be using Urgster. Thank you. And see you about in a month at the latest. Bye-bye.